This longevity community is awesome. You've raised just under $100,000 towards the rapamycin clinical study, and I can't thank you enough. This study will give us immense insight as to whether we can use rapamycin in combination with exercise to hold on to our muscle strength as we age, meaning that we can still do the hobbies that we love and significantly reduce the need for rest homes and private hospitals. But we've still got a way to go to reach the $492,177.69 goal. And a few people wanted a bit more explanation about the study before they donated. The study design was supervised by Professor Matt Caberline, and we think this is a really promising area of research because as we age we overactivate the muscle building enzyme called mTOR. It's almost like our body recognizes that we're becoming weaker, that we need to start building new proteins. The trouble is, if we're overactivating mTOR and always trying to build, then we're never allowing our bodies to activate autophagy or the cell clearance process. We need both periods of time where we're switching on mTOR to build new proteins, but equally we need separate periods of time where mTOR is switched off, where we can clear away the old, damaged components in our bodies. So we think that if older adults exercise for most of the week, but for one of their rest days, if they take rapamycin to switch off mTOR and allow that cell clearance process, we think that that will overall result in greater muscle performance and strength. Plus, when rapamycin is tested in mice, over and over again it results in a 15 to 20% lifespan extension. To test our idea, we've designed a 13-week, randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled study, and both groups will have an exocycle at home and they'll need to use it three times a week, but only one of the groups will be taking rapamycin 6 milligrams once a week and the other group will take placebo. The primary outcome will be the change in the 30-second chair stand test, and we're measuring a bunch of other things such as the six minute walking test, blood work, DNA methylation and glycan age. The full study design is registered on the Australia New Zealand clinical trial registry and a link is below in the pinned comment. Now we come to the cost breakdown. Each participant will cost $7,232.65. This includes things like investigator time, gym usage, physios to actually measure the muscle performance, smartwatches, DEXA scans and blood work. We'll have 40 participants in the trial, which brings us to $289,306. Recruitment for the study will cost roughly $10,000. Startup fees are just under $18,000, and this includes things like setting up the pharmacy, getting the rapamycin and the matching placebo. Annual fees for the hospital that's running the trial, so over a two-year period, it comes to just over $40,000. We've got closeout fees of $6,000, and then finally we've got other procedures, which totals just over $125,000. So this includes things like a third-party auditor, data and safety management. And once we add on taxes, it leaves us with $492,177.69. And if we can reach that goal in the next couple of months, then we'll be ready to start patient recruitment in February 2023. So far, we've raised close to $8,000 from PayPal donations, $31,000 from YouTube donations, $50,000 from VitaDAO and $10,000 from Do Not Age. We do have a long way to go, but we are making significant progress. So if you are in a position to donate, please check out the PayPal link in the pinned comment, or you can use YouTube's fundraising feature. I'm also reaching out to other researchers, doctors and investors, as well as applying for grants here in New Zealand. Let's get this done. And a big thank you again to Do Not Age, which is a research organization, for their $10,000 donation towards the rapamycin trial, and if you want to benefit from their ingredients, please check out the pinned comment.